go forward with that? There, there are certainly some buildings in the downtown that are what I would consider somewhat historically significant. Uh, and the issue of a historic district, based upon my review of the documents in regard to the Browns Mills Town Center plan, was more of an identifying marketing strategy for the area as opposed to an actual historic district. Uh, it wasn't uh, uh, from the standpoint of it being that kind of quaint historic village from one end to the other. It was really more for a um, marketing tactic for the downtown. Well, um, I, I respectfully have to disagree. I live, I have my office in Vincent Town. I lived in Vincent Town for a number of years before moving out here. I was in Vincent Town when the historic, when it was adopted as an as a historic district, and it's my understanding that a to to get a historic district with all of the regulations that are involved and all of the the advantages that are involved, you have to have buildings of historic relevance. You can't um, none of you you can't create a phony Victorian village and get any kind of recognition as a real historic district unless there are buildings in the area that are of historic relevance. Um, why not get a ruling from the uh, Pinelands Commission for all of the buildings that you propose to eventually acquire before moving forward on any of them, since we, we, we only have one own, million dollars to work with? We can't unless we own them. Okay. So in other words, there's no way to determine for sure when you spend the money for the first three buildings, whether you will ever be able to move forward with the whole plan. Is that correct? Well, Dave, don't you need to be, you could be a contract purchaser, I would presume. Yeah. Again, again, the, the premise in that last statement, George, was that, that we're going to spend the, the money, but we have it, we'll be, we'll be, if council adopts this ordinance, we'll be a contract purchaser for the site. So that would allow us to make the application to the Pinelands as a contract purchaser just like you can go before the planning or zoning board as a contract purchase. I understand that. That's for these three buildings. Yeah. But the rest of the buildings involved in the, the eventual plan of redevelopment, you will not know at the time. Let's say that it goes forward, you get all the approvals from the Pinelands, and you buy these three buildings. You still don't know whether you will get because you have no way of finding out whether you will get permission to knock down the other buildings in the area. And if there's one building that you can't knock down, the whole plan falls apart. Theoretically, that's true, except I think you have to rely on our planning professionals to know sort of the likelihood or what, the, what information's available and know the likelihood of success at the Pinelands. That's, that would be true, just like if it was a developer making the same application. They have professionals that give them advice before they go spend money and make the application. So. All right. Um, I'm not sure I'm comfortable with that answer. Um, I'm wondering if all of the council members are. Because we are not dealing with a rich township. We are not dealing with a rich state. We are not dealing with the prospect of millions of dollars of aid from the state of the federal government. We are down now at this point to our own resources, and those resources apparently are the one million dollars that were committed by the UEC some years ago and that have been carefully protected to, to be available. Um, that having been said, I believe that the plan that was adopted encompasses more than that horseshoe area that was shown because I think it, it encompasses everything from the the uh, the dam on Mirror Lake through up to the um, uh, the Brown the old Browns Mills shopping center the Berardi property the other side of um, Julius Town Road and part of the way up Noteboom uh, Road I'm sorry right right um, have you got any estimate of what just acquiring, not rebuilding, not anything, but just acquiring all of those properties would cost. 
considering that the first three are going to use up 40% of the $1 million we have available? One of the questions I asked in... Um, one of the questions I asked previously was uh, the, what JC's market was currently going for. Um, as of right now, it's... I th Don't talk about that. You don't have to talk about my okay. price. But that wouldn't we, be good. But it, 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 if I may, we really shouldn't talk about any potential negotiations with any property owner. And the answer to Mr. Petronas' question is no. There has not been the entire... The, the entire project area, it has not been quantified as to what it would uh, cost to acquire because for a variety of reasons. One, uh, we can't do the entire project. Uh, anybody who does development knows that you have to pick and do different pieces at a time. There is one piece that's before the council right now, and the fact that there may be other pieces that will require additional funds is not the issue. Fair enough then exactly what total area of the original redevelopment plan. You made, you made several references to the fact that the plan has been adopted and has been in place for several years, but it was a bigger plan than I think what you're contemplating now. So could you explain to us all what portion of that bigger plan that was adopted in 2011 you are, con you are pr planning to proceed on? I have to assume that either that, uh, that question is unanswerable or there's refusal to make it public. George, what Ma council has been told and what we expect is development right in the area of these buildings that we're purchasing. We're not looking at purchasing uh, anything further down to the lake on Trenton Road, on No Boom Avenue. Right now, the focus is hopefully, if we buy these properties, it will encourage a developer to come in and decide that they can afford. And we did have businesses interested in coming to the old Acme site with the former developer that was interested. We know that through the survey we did several years ago, there were businesses who said they were possibly interested in coming when we were doing this plan, I think include like salad works, game shop, stop, that type of thing. And I believe right now, from what we've been told, the intention is just to focus on right there. We own a lot of the property that's there already the parking lot, that if we can get someone to come in and maybe develop there and do a few few positive business ventures, it will also encourage further development in the, in the township. Okay. Am I, I correct? Yes. Okay. Fair point. However, there have been several references tonight to the redevelopment plan that everybody committed themselves to back all the way back in 2011. But that's not what's being proposed here. What's being proposed here is a different plan or a partial plan. And I'm just trying to de determine how much of the original redevelopment plan is being contemplated. This is part of that plan. This is part of it, but not all of it. Right. Well, we're still I contemplating all of it happening. Well, I could actually address your question. I mean, the redevelopment plan, the idea is is to have private industry come in right. and do the redevelopment. What municipalities can do through which redevelopment powers is provide the zoning and other economic incentives such as tax abatements to incentivize private developers to come in. The idea isn't for the municipality to be the, generally to be the private developer here. What is what is contemplated is, is acquiring parcels in this one particular area of the redevelopment plan so that then we could then flip it to a redeveloper who because then we'll have control. Um, unlike the Browns Mill Shopping Center where the township doesn't have control of the property, right? And we've had that imp we've had that impediment for years because any developer says comes to the township and says, you don't own the land. What about the, sh the owner? And then we always say, well, the owner is the owner, and we have to either 
reach, you have to reach an agreement with them where we have to condemn the property, and it's been a substantial impediment to having any developer come forward because we don't own the property. So the difference here and the approach here is to acquire the property and then flip it so then we have control so that we don't have to deal with a third party in, in a development deal later on. That's I, sort of the goal. I understood that at the outset. However, you're proposing not to, you're not proposing a plan that's contingent on these three properties only. You're proposing a plan, or I assume that the administration is proposing a plan that encompasses a number of contiguous properties. I'm trying to find out what the whole list of those contiguous properties that comprise this plan is. Because I haven't heard, I haven't heard a plan tonight. I've heard some options to buy three properties, but I haven't heard what the overall plan is for all of the properties that are involved in this proposal. Well, I mean, the plan, I mean, generally speaking, without talking about what we would do with future private owners, it would be to have a developer develop the, develop these parcels that meet the criteria of the approved redevelopment plan. That the redevelopment plan is zoning. That's what it is, right? Ultimately, it's overlay zoning for the site. So ideally, a developer will come in and say, well, I want to put these various commercial components in, and this meets the criteria of your redevelopment plan, and this is how, or if they need modification. Well, I didn't want to talk about that, but if hopefully they would come in and say, okay, I can now build something that you have contemplated. The redevelopment plan is a plan. So the idea is to have it effectuate the plan through, through private developers. So this... I mean, that, the plan is to have somebody come in and, and do something that's that's already approved. No. That's your question. I mean, if your question is what other parcels do we want to acquire as part of it, that's something that's going to be something that the mayor and council have to discuss after the in the future because they're going to then, then impact our our ability to negotiate with other property owners. I think that I have to disagree with that. This orig the, the original plan specified a large number of properties that would be involved. That uh, painting or, or drawing is a uniform construction plan. It doesn't, it's not contingent on rebuilding one property at a time. It's contingent on rebuilding a group of properties to achieve a uniform look. What is that group of properties? That's my question. Um. I don't think I can. <laughs> well, I, I, the question ultimately goes to what other parcels do we would we want to acquire, and I think that would undermine the the township's position. In other words, you're not willing to let us know what the plan is. What the? We're, we're going in circles, George. No. Yes, we, we are, are because I you're refusing not. to answer my question, and you're hiding you're hiding behind confidentiality, which doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. So if, let's say you own the property, hypothetically, that was in one of these parcels that were affected. So should I go out in the public and say, yeah, we want to acquire George Petronas' property, and we think it's valued at $220,000, but we're only going to offer him one hundred and seventy. dollars Should we have that kind of discussion out in public? Would that further the taxpayer's interest? I, think I, I don't think so. Oh, I disagree with you. I think the taxpayers are entitled to know how you plan to spend their money. Well, You're talking about a plan. And you're not telling us what the plan is. A lot, of, a lot of us spent a lot of time, years, assisting the administration in putting this plan together. A lot of people were involved. Council people were involved. Uh, members of their families were involved. Members of the public were involved. This was a work that took a lot of time and a lot of careful thought and was modified and discussed. The modifications were discussed as resources diminished. And it's a public document. Correct. The plan and is that is not the plan you're proposing here. That's this, obvious. This, no, this is about the, the, the town village, which right. is one, one of the six, six subdivisions. And you're not telling us what the town village is going, what properties are going to consist, what the town village we, is we, going we to consist of. What, in summary, what, what's been said tonight, um, we, we don't have a developer today. Right. But this is the initial step in, in purchasing, acquiring properties on, on, this, on, this prop, on, on this land. So this is the initial step in in this plan. And when when uh, the properties, 
if we own the property and a developer comes in, this is something we didn't mention that I think is important, that the funds for the sale of the lots that we now own that go to this developer or companies, whoever wants to buy it, would come back in to the UEC and replenish the funds that we're using now for these properties, if and the that properties helps. Are sold. But right now, the only properties that I think we're focusing on is right there. And that hope is... Obviously. That it would... Exactly. And that hope would be that that might generate Mr. Berardi to do some movement, try to make his properties look better, or actually sell to a developer. You know, it's very frustrating for all of us. We know we all hate what has happened to the old Acme site. We hate that it sat there and nothing's been done. Uh, uh, we all, as somebody said, we all agree that part of Joyous Town Road looks atrocious. You know, and I, I will tell you, I personally uh, looked into... Uh, the Dr. Shapiro office building, and it's in such atrocious shape that there was no way I was looking to buy it for my day job, but, you know, for it to become an office, and it was so bad, and we're, no. You know, so I don't, I don't know what else you expect us to go into. We don't have a plan as a developer, the name of the stores. All we know is we, we feel that this is something, and this is something where I basically have changed my mind tonight. I was not for this originally. But I know you weren't. We feel, I was pretty adamant about that last month, or last meeting, but if we can get this property, we can get a developer to come in. We know there are some businesses that want to come here. We know Dollar General wants a Browns Mills store as well as the Pemberton store. So there's a possibility that this property can be developed so at least something is getting done in town that will attract businesses here. Mr. Patronus, um, I'm sorry, Council President, um, a point of order, please. Um, the Council, um, as a whole, and respect to you, Mr. Patronus, um, agreed that it would be a um, five-minute um, comment. And I thank Mr. Moorhead for holding your comments down to the um, five minutes so that others would be able to speak. And to you, Ms. Um, Clara Wadsworth, I appreciate you um, doing the same as well. Not to cut you off, Mr. Patronus, but I have seen when they were asking if there were other people to speak, um, many people who have raised their hands. And out of respect to you, um, we as the council did agree upon that. Well, out of respect to the council, I take exception to the time limit. Okay. Um, I don't think it's appropriate. Okay. Um, I don't think that a plan that has worked on and thought about mm -hmm. for years mm -hmm. should be limited to five minutes worth of discussion. Mm -hmm. well, you and I don't think you should act on this thing tonight. Point well taken. Thank you. Um, because I don't think there is a new plan. You're talking about three properties. Mr. You're Patronus. talking about spending... Mr. Patronus, we did establish that tonight. Um, and out of respect, um, we, we, we will move on to the next person. What authority do you have to limit discussion? What authority do I have to yes. limit the discussion? What authority discussion? do you have to limit discussion? Mr. Bayer, would you answer that, please? Yeah, the council can set rules about about time periods for public discussion among individuals. Other communities actually have a general rule of X number of minutes for, as a general rule for all meetings. Here, council just established it for this particular subject. That is but it correct. is permitted by law. All right. Then since you don't want to answer difficult questions, I leave. Mr. Tompkins. He's a speaker. I don't know what kind of answer he wanted. If I hit the five minutes, throw me out, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, me? Do you, uh, all joking aside, in other communities, I've actually seen stoplights. All joking aside, 
Yeah. Clocks, alarm clocks. School and they, board and has. Goes, it. And it, it goes board. off. School board has. Even and the council think, president stop. says you're done. I'm not kidding. For a while. I'm not kidding. You're, you're into your, your project minutes. already. <laughs> Two minutes Jack, into it. Jack, 30 minutes. Jack Tompkins, Pemberton Heights. First off, I want to thank everyone for not kicking the same Acme can down the road. At least you're kind of thinking outside the box. For years, all I heard is Acme, Acme, Acme. And it got really old. And so you're looking at something different, which is nice, okay? I might not necessarily agree with what we're looking at, and, and I'll give you my couple of two cents here. Um, the first thing is this long-term project that you folks keep saying it's been in the works a long time, and, and, and it seems like you're steadfast on that. We know the incandescent light bulb has been working for a long time, too. But recently, the LED light bulb has been kind of grabbing a lot of fame because it works a little bit better and it's a little bit more cost-effective. So you might, might not want to think that just because it's been in the process for a long time, doesn't mean it's the only thing that you can do. Um, Sherry, you had mentioned the parking back there. <coughs> a lot of townships and, and stuff, when they're looking at shopping and stuff, parking, parking garages go up because parking is a commodity big time. So if you have parking back there, that is a really good thing, um, depending on how you're utilizing the area. But parking is a good, it, it's a huge commodity. Like I said, parking garages go up all over the places for shopping and stuff. A um, couple things I did have, though, the, the properties there. You're probably running into $12,000 a year property taxes there is what we're getting as a township, and I'm guessing. Uh, if I'm wrong there, forgive me, but it's reasonable guess. The plan is possibly to tear these, acquire these properties and then tear them down. We're going to lose about $12,000 worth of property taxes there. In Ten the years, and that's 120 grand. In the short term. Ten years, it's 120 grand. But if you get a developer before Ten that. years, it's 120. You're cutting into my time there, Sorry. buddy. No, I apologize. <laughs> I shouldn't. I was just playing. Ten years, we're talking 120 grand. No, 20 years, we're talking a little bit more money. After a while, this could get substantial, where you folks might even take notice. Acme's been sitting there for 20 years empty. We've been kicking that can for, what, 20 years or so? But this could hypothetically happen over here where we're looking at purchasing these pro properties and knocking them down. Then you're going to have the eyesore of an open lot. Um, I, you know, I'd rather have a building there that we might be able to lease out to a business, use some of the leftover UEZ funds to uh, refurbish some of those buildings until we get a developer in there. We own them. Lease them out to somebody instead of knocking the things down. Think outside the box is all I'm asking. I, I know that's a big thing to ask in this township, but think outside the box. Um, and then one thing I haven't heard tonight is the cost to tear these buildings down. Has that been thrown into this? Yes. Because I know that some of the other other funds were in there, but that's... Part of that 394000 Right. And then there's one other thing, the, the, the single-family home, the dwelling back in the back, you know, I don't know if that was my folks' home. I, I think I'd be concerned with, you know, with maybe the township taking it. Uh, they might have desires to live there and pass it on to the next couple of generations. Uh, that was my initial thought when I bought my house here, pass it on to my daughter. Um, I might not feel so kindly with the township gaining uh, ownership of that and, and tearing it down. Uh, that's my ha family homestead there. But I'm just trying to give you some food to, you know, kind of think about this stuff. You know, I, I, I appreciate that you're thinking outside the box. You're not looking at the Acme store and you're not throwing that can down the street all the time. But I think if we have these UEZ funds and we have all these empty buildings and we have some of these stores that are struggling a little bit, maybe we might want to use the UEZ, UEZ funds to prop some of these businesses up or give them a shot in the arm that they need to bring more money into this town. That's all I have. Hey, Jack, real quick, you, your five minutes is not up. I'll take part of that, okay? Listen, I just want to um, just address one thing um, that you had mentioned about the, the house in the back. That also belongs to, um, what do you call that place? Bill's Auto Supply. The auto parts, the auto, auto parts yeah. store. Yeah. yeah. And I can't mention what that house used to be back there, but I used to drive back there all the time going to CBS, but... I'm glad it's gone. All I know is what I saw on Google Maps. So, oh. you know, like I said, I don't know all I know. I'm glad gone. it's gone, I'll tell you. <laughs> all right, that's all I have. Thanks, Jack. 
Mr. Sam. I think Sam. they have it out for rent. I'm sorry. Miss Wadsworth and um, Miss Waters and then Mr. Tam. Norma Waters, Pemberton Heights. I was interested uh, in the mayor's uh, letter in the latest newsletter about uh, the challenges that our community still faces including maintaining our infrastructure, uh, dams and buildings, bringing economic growth to the township, addressing the high number of vacant homes, and it made me wonder, and what about the high number of vacant businesses? Um, he goes on in the letter to talk about recent legislation requiring res responsible parties of residential properties to register them when vacant and pay a registration fee to the township. Why does this not also apply to vacant businesses? I've been studying the redevelopment plan and the master plan for this township. And it has seemed to me that uh, remarkable <coughs> that I have not heard in these meetings a reiteration of the vision for this township. <coughs> I don't hear any of you talking about all those meetings and what everybody wants for this town ultimately. In the master plan it says, so what is the vision of a future? The vision is a harmonious community with a beautiful town center in Browns Mills, successful businesses, a great school system, a pedestrian safe environment, and maintaining the quality of forests and farms while serving all of the residents of this township. I appreciate Jack's comments that myself included, the focus on that eyesore of the old acme is on and on and on and on. It is time to look at some other things. But what about this master plan? You paid big dollars to Reagan for the master plan, for the redevelopment plan, and nobody has really taken it seriously. That plan uh, has addressed a number of areas, not just this Browns Mills Redevelopment Center. It, it encompasses parts of the township where I live. Route 206 and Route 630, Route 530 west of Pend Pemberton Borough. The south side of Route 38, South Pemberton Road. That's my neighborhood. I'd like to hear something about that. Although the math in this master plan is incorrect, the conclusions uh, do seem born, you know, to bear out as to what redevelopment of those areas could potentially generate in revenue for this township. Potential tax rateables for all of these areas is over a half a billion dollars. Now, uh, that would generate in excess of nine million dollars revenue every year for this township. They're talking about general, uh, you know, changing uh, zoning for general commercial and light industrial activities. I think some of those jo zoning changes have been made. There are areas coming into town that in uh, the master plan 
it, it notes that father and son uh, parking area for those moving trucks and describes them as an unattractive gateway into Pemberton Township and expanding the uh, offset from the road there from 300 feet to 600 feet and requiring some kind of shielding would make our township much more attractive. You come into town and you have what at one time was a beautiful German restaurant that, was, that brought people into Pemberton Township all the time. Then the old folks retired and it was sold. And of course it didn't make it because it wasn't of the quality. So it was sold again. And that lasted hardly any time at all. That has remained vacant. It's with a bank. It's falling apart. And just next door is a, an eyesore that I, I can't imagine that the fire department and the township does not close down uh, Thompson's lawnmower. I'm sorry, but you drive into this town and you talk about eyesores in Browns Mills, there are eyesores all over. Wawa did this town a big favor when they put in the Super Wawa and took out that run-down lumber yard that was there for how many decades? There's much more that has to be done. I'm against your spending any money until you take into account the entire township and all of our needs. When you take on these old derelict pro properties, you increase li the potential for liability for this township. You don't know uh, what the fire hazards, what the crime hazards are, uh, are or are going to be once you acquire these properties. And I think you're, you're jumping the gun here. Sorry that I've overspoken. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Ms. Waters, you mentioned that there, there is uh, much more that needs to be done, and I think all of council um, agrees with, with that statement. Uh, you, al you also mentioned the, uh, the master plan, um, and, and 1.4 uh, of the master plan, the overall summary, it states the community overwhelm overwhelmingly stated that the main focus of the redevelopment shall be, and number two is generate new rateables and job opportunities in the downtown area by encouraging more commercial, retail, restaurant development to support the needs of the Boer Hospital, the Joint Base, and the community. Um, I believe this can be the initial step in, in, in doing that. Are you uh, addressing me, uh, Jason? May I respond to that? Sure. I wasn't addressing you. I was just making the comment, but sure. Let's not forget that... No, Mr. Tam. Let's not forget that what you're talking about is the Browns Mills Redevelopment Plan, which was to become an attachment to the master plan. Browns Mills is not the entirety of Pemberton Township, and it should not be taking all of our, our entire township is UEZ, not just Browns Mills. We should not be using funds, you know, to, to do just a partial plan here. If, if you want to invest money, invest it in something that's going to have a return for this township and give us some jobs. How about some general commercial light industrial investment? Have you looked at the alternatives instead of being so anxious to spend money on this undefined property acquisition. Thank you, Ms. Waters. Mr. Tamp? One of the questions I have is uh, who made the decision to use a million dollars for redevelopment instead of use it to help small businesses, current businesses in town? Who made that? The council or the mayor? Well, this proposition came came from um, ad administration, um, and this what we're discussing today is is not one million dollars. It's it's four. It's close to four hundred thousand dollars. 
No, but who made that? Because that's the council has the power for that. The mayor doesn't have the power to tie up a million dollars and use it in the direction that he wants to use it. He doesn't have that. And I could be wrong, Mr. Bear. Does the mayor have that authority to tie up that million dollars and direct it for redevelopment, or is that the council's decision? He's, he's giving us an idea and making a request. No, and it's it, you didn't answer the question. It's not the question. Well, I mean, I think, well, the BA wants to talk, but I would generally disagree with your proposition. I don't want to be arguing. If I may, the mayor cannot, in of his own uh, volition, spend the, UEZ, the million dollars of UEZ. What the process is and always has been is that administration makes a proposal for the expenditure of funds for a particular authorized purpose and then that is brought to council for discussion as we're having tonight and for council to decide yes or no whether the request is going to be granted or not. That's the way it is for the $394,000 that we're talking about now. That's how it will be for the balance of the million dollars from UEZ. That's how it is every single meeting when the council votes on the bill list. Well, it seemed to be implied early on tonight that not spending for small businesses to help them out in many ways to pool it into one million for redevelopment. The next thing is if this was going to be proposed tonight and this whole plan, they should have cut out a section and say, look, from Bank Street to the squad building, we're going to redevelop it, and this is the plan we're going to redevelop. So they could do a section that would tie in for future redevelopment and earmark it and say we're going to spend no more than a million dollars for it. But in the meantime, they should have negotiated with all those property owners and then come and get it at one time. Because what will happen, and it's happened in other communities too, where something like this starts out and looks like they got the money for it. You know, 400 and something thousand dollars, this will end up costing, then it'll go on for a number of years. And then, what are you going to get, a piecemeal development of one small lot here and one small lot there? Or are you going to wait years to accumulate that space between Bank Street and the squad building? That's the only practical way to do it, is that one section right in there. And if you can't plan and do it and have the exact figures tonight, I don't know how you could sit there and approve it. Because many towns, who ends up with the bill, it's these people out here, the taxpayers. Because what happens, you put money into it, we got money to start with. Oh, we got 400000 we'll take care of it. Then when it comes to the next step, and this thing drags on, you have to acquire other properties, you may exceed the million dollars very easily by the time you drag on with legal fees. The legal fees, the engineering fees, the planning fees, the surveyor, the environmental fees, and you name it. And as time goes on, the loss of revenue from the businesses that you have acquired. So if they came forth with a plan, Mr. Benedetti and administration, and had this all banked out from Bank Street to the Swap Building, we like to acquire these, we've talked to all the owners, and tenants if we reach some sort of an agreement now we need approval from council it's going to cost us nine hundred thousand or eight hundred fifty thousand or a million dollars then it makes more sense but what was proposed tonight that's like a needle in a haystack mr benedetti why did we choose the the last two the end buildings to purchase first it, it will assist us in uh, in our acquisition of additional properties. And we know that the JC's market is for sale, correct? Yes. How long has JC's been up for sale, do we know? It's, it's been for sale for several years. And what about... Some say seven. Seven? Yeah. And what about the um, other property, Sun's Market? Is that for sale right now? Uh, I am not that aware of... you are aware of? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay. The other question is, once we purchase these properties, our intent is to have a developer, once we purchase these properties, it will become the township's property, is that correct? That's correct. They're all the township. And a developer will come in, hopefully, and buy these properties, or buy this property from us as the owners. 
it, it is our intent to secure a developer to transfer the properties to sell them to a developer. Which would bring him, money back to us. To bring the money back to the township uh, and develop it consistent with the redevelopment plan as the community has visioned the Julius Town Road Plaza. And we are also under the impression that JC is willing to per to you know sell this property to us. They are very interested. Hey, Lisa. I don't think we should discuss, like, okay, in no. particular, but the fa I think the Just fact the it's fact for sale they it speaks for, for sale. itself, but I don't know that we want to get into Got it. that kind they of They could sell it to a developer. They could sell it to anybody. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, is there any other plan other than Bank Street to Dr. Shapiro's office? That seems to be a big uh -huh. thing. Now, I thought that was what the plan is. Does the plan involve purchasing these and the purchase of these buildings for anything else in that area? It, it is, the, the, this is the area that we're focusing on to develop now. And right. th this is the area that we have uh, available properties for us to be able to acquire and then turn over to a developer to develop. My other question is, since we've had a lot of discussion about the UEC funds, have we had any of our businesses in that area come and apply for the use of those funds in any way? No. Okay. When was the last time they did? Follow-up share. Wait a minute. Well, uh, the, well how long they should the money understand been it's available. Their business, the if they belong to the UEC before, not all our businesses belong to That's UEC. That's correct. And not every business in the township is part of the UEC. There, um, there are approximately 60 businesses and that's the, on the high side that are that are uh, participating in the UEZ in the township. Mr. Benedetti, uh, Mr. Petronas mentioned the administration has been uh, carefully protecting that last million dollars. How long has that million dollars been in the fund for? Would you know off the top of your head? Or? Well, I believe that has been uh, uh, held by the township since they changed the provisions in the UEZ program right. in uh, 2011. They being the legis New Jersey this, legislature. Right. Yes. So it's been in the account for years now. Yeah. Some years now. We still have Mrs. Phillips. Oh, Miss oh, yeah, Phillips. Oh, yeah. Diane had a question. Yeah, I just wanted to back off on um, what you were saying there, Sherry. But my question goes to you real quick, um, Mr. Benedetti, and maybe this might help. You know, I don't know if you, you may even have a question on this one. But... Um, we speak of the empty houses, and I'm concerned because I think we ought to sit down and have a talk, and that's, that's my main thing. We, need, we have to talk. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. No arguing and all that. We may not disagree, and, but we have to sit down and talk. Have we gone in, and we, you said we haven't, but I feel that we should have gone in and spoke to J.C. Market, um, who chooses not to participate. I asked you, well, I asked Mr. Um, Gonzalez um, uh, about three months ago for a listing of those who participate in the UEZ, and thank you, and I got that information, and I happened to not see the Suns Market on there, I guess because they choose not to participate because of the supplies that they sell. Also, JC Market has chosen for years not to participate. I guess maybe perhaps the things that um, they sell but my thing is sitting down talking with them asking them uh, maybe we can help you to relocate in some of these empty houses I'm telling you I really believe I'm a firm believer in sitting down having uh, a conversation I, I really truly am and and I'm I'm not I'm like Mr. Prickett said uh, at the last meeting you know yes we do need to to start development and uh, move around in the town but we have to talk to one another and I believe that these people would and, and I don't think they would run. I don't think they would say, okay, I'm jumping up my price or whatever. It's not that people are running down here, but I just feel a lot of courtesy if it would be, you know, could we just sit down and let, can we help you relocate? It, 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 
If I may, okay. all those sorts of issues are always on the table. It's okay. also a matter of strategy mm -hmm. uh, as to when we initiate discussions and when we don't. Okay. It isn't that we won't talk to people. It's that there are times where it's better to wait to talk to some okay. folks while you're talking to others. So if we we're going to be interested in buying other properties in the neighborhood that are for sale, we will have discussions at a time when I think it is in the best interest of the township to have those discussions. It is the ultimate deal that we can make on behalf of the township that is the most important part of that. So. I can't and we cannot publicly give you any more description as to what you're saying because it wouldn't be in the interests in, in the township's interest as part of any future potential negotiations. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you for allowing me for a few m moments there. Ms. Phillips. America Phillips. My two questions what I have, this is in reference to Ordinance A-2015 and Ordinance, ordinance 9-2015. Okay, the way I look at it is, I've been in this township for 35 years. And what I've been seeing in my township, it is, we not improve it, we went down the hill. Those businesses weren't there before. And I'm pretty sure, like the, you were talking about the UEC, is any UEC coordinator who are being visited every single business people in town, if they need any help, they can help them before they just pack and left? Can anybody answer me? Is any UEC coordinator in this township. Yeah, we have a... a He's right there. Mr. Benedetti okay. has that as part of his job. You're looking. Okay. The, he has been uh, the, the... Every single business in town being, he has been visited and before they packed their bags and they were leaving because about the business and tried to offer them their assistance. If they was money they need or improve their business. Mr. Benedetti, would you care to address that? Well, the, the state changed the whole UEZ process where they took over all of the interfacing with the businesses. So the, the UEZ authority itself deals with the businesses anymore. And, uh, and, and the locality uh, does not. And the, the, the UEZ itself, it, it doesn't provide specific guidance any longer, correct? The UEZ, it, they don't provide specific guidance to townships any longer? They, you know, it, what we wind up doing, what I wind up doing is referring businesses to the UEZ office as the specific representative that, that handles our area. And, uh, and they will reach back to the, the business itself. Jason, can I ask a quick okay. question? Ms. Phillips, can I just tag off yes. of yours, too? When I asked for that report, um, Mr. Benedetti, uh, there was a, uh, a, a um, car repair place, and he had asked, could he help the township residents out and participate in the UEZ? And you did say just now that you referred him to Burlington. We don't do that here? We don't? It, it, if I may, what Mr. Benedetti said is, is that the Urban Enterprise Zone Authority of the state government is the entity that we have to refer businesses to oh. because the state legislature passed the law and the governor signed the law that said that they took care of the business interactions, not like it used to be, where we would have our own UEZ coordinator and we would be able to solicit membership. The state of New Jersey, the legislature, and the governor changed everything. Thanks, Ms. Phillips. I, uh... Okay. What I've been seeing this township, it is we have a lot of restaurants that have been closing down. It's a family has some kind of a 
they get it together coming out from another state. They can even accommodate it in their own township because we as a resident, we like to leave the money to the township. I cannot see any good restaurants in here. The only one halfway distant, I can say, possibility is Ricardo. It's nothing else. Mm -hmm. You got 50 people, you got the 60, 100 people, guess what? You cannot go even get nothing around here. Mm -mm. And he said, okay, I, I be honest with, uh, with everybody as a resident for this township. I go against to that and those property. Number one, our township has so many properties. They cannot even take care where they got. Now, these people in this, uh, in this properties in here, I'm pretty sure they pay taxes like I pay my taxes. That you prefer to have a revenue there is something coming up to you before you jump in under, uh, um, if they jump in there, uh, if they're rope, when you do not even know if the other people cannot sell your, uh, your property. And you do not know where it, what kind of contamination or anything is in that in those property yet. It looks like you're just taking the money and what is going to happen in the near future, I know for the, for clear up only a lot, clear up a house or an apartment. Ten years ago, it was $50,000. Now, how many buildings that you got empty there, you got to tear them down. Hmm. And you do not know where the oil was in the past. That's when the pine land came in there and the picture. But, but Mrs. Phillips here, the township's going to know if there's an environmental problem at the property before we purchase it. Before, if there is one, we're not obligated to purchase it. So that, that won't be a risk to the township. That's a risk to the property owner. Why they don't let somebody else to purchase those properties if they want to come and put their own business? Why is the township is so greedy that they want to purchase those properties themselves? Open to the public, they can buy. I'm pretty sure it's not yours, you want to buy the property. But if somebody coming out from out of state and want to buy the property and to put a business there, the benefit the town, it benefits the township more than the way you guys put it up? Well, it hasn't happened so far. The goal is to encourage that activity through making a bigger piece of land available for a developer. That's the goal. And they've been for sale for years, some. Okay, what I was reading in one of the historical, excuse me, I know five minutes are up, that's my last question. No. I was reading an historical book for Pemberton Township that when they asked me to move out to the new development, how greedy they were, that they were paying the lease in the old building because they did not want nobody else to come to their community and other supermarket. And I live it that way. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Phillips. Thank you. Council, is there uh, any further discussion? Hello, my name is Rhonda Sims. I'm definitely going to keep within five minutes. Um, my only concern with the uh, redevelopment plan, and that's a large part of the reason within the next five years I'm leaving this area, and I've been here 40 years, because there hasn't really been any significant change in the last 40 years. And I've had several conversations with the mayor, and I told him, I said, there is absolutely no reason, because I was here during a time when it did seem like we had more businesses and things mm -hmm. were going on. I said, my only concern is when you have a federal prison, a military base, and traffic coming through this area over the last 40 years, and you can't get businesses to come into this town, what makes you think that spending our, you know, the little bit of money that we have on something new is going to all of a sudden get these businesses to come through here? And I told him, I, my kids are older now, so I, you know, I don't have to entertain them as much. And I told him, I said, with me working in Mount Holly, but I live in Pemberton, I would rather go towards Cherry Hill and Mount Holly because I would be able to do more things at one time. Being in this area, I don't go to a Peebles and I don't go to the shoe department because if I have to feed my kids, entertain my kids, and shop, I want to be in an area where I can do more things than just 
hit one or two stores. So unless that plan is going to include some kind of entertainment, some kind of restaurants, and more than just businesses, then I, I, it's just going to be another empty building because businesses are not going to come here. I have friends that, you know, a uh, matter of fact, a girlfriend, she actually finds locations for Gap and Banana Republic. What's going to happen is companies are going to come here and they're going to talk to everybody around in the businesses. They're going to see how well the businesses have done and they're not going to come, even though it's a brand new building. And they're just not going to come because if I can't entertain my kids, if I can't feed my kids, and I can't get more things done, it would make more sense for me to go to Cherry Hill or to Mount Holly to accomplish more. And so what I spoke to the mayor about, because at one point he told me that he was thinking about building a five-star hotel to attract the military base. But again, as soon as the military base finds out there's nothing to do in this area other than go to stores. So I know that you said that you can't guarantee that there's going to be more than just commercial build, um, you know, companies or businesses in this area. You have to look at multi, you know, uh, serving multi-purposes. Um, for, in order for the community to stay in this area. Now, when you talk about the dollar store, yes, I was happy. I was thrilled when the general dollar came here. The first thing the mayor said, well, it would open up employment. There are the same two employees there since it's been there. So it's not like it's giving jobs to 100 people. You go to the new family dollar, two more employees. And I'm, pretty, I'm there pretty much five times a week because it's convenient for me. So those are the kind of things that you have to look at when you look at this development. I wish. I probably wouldn't leave New Jersey if there was something more here, but this area offers nothing. Um, to the business administrator, I work in Mount Holly. When the business administrator started his first day, he walked business to business, introducing himself and making himself available. I don't know if you've ever done that in Pemberton. With the UEZ fund, the gentleman back there, I didn't even know what it was. He explained it to me. And again, uh, Mr. I'm sorry, Benedetto, he said that you made a decision to take the little million dollars that we have and not offer it to the different smaller companies to develop them. You made a decision to invest it in this. The one thing that I told the mayor, I said, Mayor, I have your back. I'm all about supporting the mayor and our council, but the only thing I ask is that you treat your, our money like you would your own. And I'm sorry, if I don't have $50 million in the bank, don't act like you do. If I'm only sitting on $20,000, then budget it accordingly. And unfortunately, we don't have that kind of money. So I, I'm just asking that you don't make a definitive decision tonight, that you really just slow down a little bit. We've been waiting 20 years for redevelopment. So just slow down and don't make such a rash decision on just a little bit of money. That's all I'm asking. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, seeing no one else, this concludes our uh, public comment period on this, on this specific ordinance. Uh, council, is there any discussion? Well, I'll start off. I, um, again, I, I believe in communication. Sorry. And um, I believe that um, the JC market and the Suns market those owners that I have known for over 25 years would have loved to have sat down and s talked to someone. As a matter of fact, the uh, uh, owners of the JC market, uh, when the father passed away, had asked me, did they know of anyone interested in purchasing their property? Um, because it was quite hard on the wife who has a, a severe disability and uh, one of the daughters um, had made a commitment to um, go into her teaching down in another area. And one daughter had to quit her job to uh, come and help her mother. So I'm sure that they would have been able to negotiate perhaps almost anything that um, you would have offered. Um, again, I b believe in um, talking to the people. Maybe perhaps they could relocate. I listened to the residents here tonight. Um, one thing, Ms. Sims, um, slow down. Um, we've spent money already to advertise and so on and so forth.
I don't have a problem with slowing down. I just don't want a soul out here to say that um, I wasted the township's money. I didn't waste the, waste the township's money. I listened to my residents. And I used my thoughts. And I just wanted to say that to council and also to the residents here of whatever decision I make tonight, that is the decision that I am going to make contingent on how I feel in my heart. And I just want to thank everyone that came up. Uh, Mr. Patronus, um, 